everybody. Welcome to the Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matthew Weber. I'm joined by nobody. Yes, I'm all alone. Again, sad me. Today's topic. So, lately I've been taking big, grand, overall, you know, kind of meta topics. Like, why you should use Arch, why you should use Ubuntu, those kind of things. Today I'm going to do a little, something a little different, yet kind of not. So today's topic is snaps for good or evil is going to be the title of the episode. I talked a little bit about this when we talked about Ubuntu, but I thought it would be good to dive in because there's been a lot of discussion about the state of snaps and the state of package management in Linux and fragmentation and all that kind of thing going on lately. And I thought I'd throw my two cents in for what it's worth, which is I guess it would be two cents. <laughs> so I thought I'd start. This Linux podcast is primarily for new people. So if you don't know what a snap is, snaps are a universal app packages that can be shared across all Linux distros without needing to be repackaged. So if you don't know, Linux applications come in packages. If you're using Ubuntu usually they, or at least they used to, they used to come in Debs. If you're if you come in if you're uh, using a um, Fedora-based distro, you know RPMs uh, and so on, and then you'd use a package manager to install those things. Well, so if you're on Arch, you use Pacman, Ubuntu or Debian apt, you know, and, um, OpenSUSE, you did use Zipper, uh, things like that. And because there are so many distros, and every distro has their own package management system and different way of packaging things, every developer would have to go through and package their application uh, for each of these distros in order for them to be on there. Now, normally it wasn't the developer themselves that did it, or perhaps it was, or it was a member of the community, but it still entails a lot of work. The idea behind Snaps is that this developers can go through and package their application one time, in a snap using uh, Snapcraft, and the their app would be available on any distro that supports Snap, which is pretty much all Linux distros. Now, not all Linux distros support Snap out of the box, but it's fairly easy to install install SnapD, um, depending on no matter what distro you're on. Another thing that Snaps do is it container contains all. Uh, the dependencies that your the application would need. So, if say say you were installing a window manager, for example, i3, i3 necessitates you install several dependencies in order to make it work properly. i3 bar, i3 lock, uh, d menu, or some other kind of menu system needs to be installed. Otherwise, i3 just is pretty much useless. Um, same thing with a lot of every package. Every package has some kind of package dependencies, whether they're in f in your face, you know about them dependencies, like you know dmenu because you use that, or if they're behind the scenes, like libraries and and uh, things like that. 32-bit libraries for a lot of games is isn't necessary for dependencies. Um, so by having snaps, you package all those things right in, and it also prevents breakages later on. So if you package a game that necessitates a 32-bit binary of some kind, and that binary it later on becomes unsupported, you still have that package available in your snap, and it keeps your application alive. Uh, one thing that Canonical does is it builds the Snap Store as the App Store for Linux, and we're going to talk a little bit about that, whether or not that's a good thing or not in the the third section of this podcast. So one of the questions I wanted to ask was why do we need snaps? And I've already alluded to it a little bit. It's easier for developers is probably the number one biggest, grandest reason behind why snaps and alternatives to snap like Flatpak are a good idea. Uh, it allows developers to package their app one time and then snap will the Snap Store will take care of distributing that through SnapD, and that's a great 
thing for developers because, like I said, they don't have to go through and package it for the AUR. They don't have to package it for Debian distros. They don't have to do it for Fedora and OpenSUSE and, you know, Solus and all those different distros that use their own proprietary, basically, uh, package management systems, which could be a both, both a time waster and, a, you know, a pain in the ass. Uh, another thing is it allows users to control versions of software. So I already talked about this a little bit. When you package the dependencies within uh, a snap, it keeps those dependencies active inside the snap. They don't go away. Um, it also pre prevents breakages for from updates. So say uh, somebody, you know, the developer of a certain 32-bit library or whatever library updates, but and that update breaks your application, you still have the older version contained within your snap and your your application still works. Uh, again, saving developers both time and effort. Um, so the idea behind why snaps are good and why we need snaps is to kind of dilute the travesty of fragmentation. And it allows developers to spend more time uh, developing it allows users to know where applications are so one of the things that probably is the biggest problem on Linux in terms of applications really isn't fragmentation so much as app discoverability when you want an application for the Mac you go to the Mac App Store when you want an application for well, Windows kind of has the same problem is that their applications are kind of all over the place you just go to websites Google is the Windows App Store Nobody uses the Windows App Store. The real Windows Store, nobody uses it. Those applications are horrible. But if you want to use it, Google Play on Android or the iOS App Store. Now, other options, uh, other examples. On Linux, we don't really have that, and that's what Snap is trying to do. is a, a single place where you can go and search for apps that make it e easy for, you know, you find new apps to, to discover categories of different apps like games and things like that. Um, so the ideas behind it are trying to solve real true problems that Linux does have because fragmentation and app discoverability are problems that we face, especially competing against the likes of Apple who does app stores really well. So that answers the, the next question, which is, are snaps a good solution to the problem of fag fragmentation? I think the answer to this is uh, an obvious yes. There are a lot of Linux distributions out there, so one place to get all your s software just makes sense. On the other hand, we're, we're going to get into the downsides, so we might as well start here. What are the downsides of Snaps? The, it reduces the control the distro you use has over the software that are, is available on its platform. So this is so if you've been you listen to any other Linux podcast, they probably you probably heard them talk about the kerfuffle between Linux Mint, the developers of Linux Mint, and the Snapcraft team. It all had to do with Chromium and not wanting to support Snaps and stuff. And it's because Snaps doesn't really give the distribution developers any control over what packages they use. And one of the... Uh, it So, like... um. A, a, a distribution could go through and uh, give these, you know, a certain set of apps, and they could give those in snaps, but they don't have control over what's packaged and with those dependencies, what version those dependencies are, um, or anything like that. And that's that could be a big problem for distributions who are more controlling over what they allow on their system, on their distros, um, especially on that beginning ISO. A lot of distributions really truly want tight fist control over what's on there. Um, I really don't care what the users do after they install it. Although it does, a lot of times if you include the, uh, an application on your distro, the, and especially for new users, the users of those applications don't go to those applications' website for support. They go back to the distro. So, say you get an Arch distro and it comes with you know whatever an arch based distro and it comes with like um chromium or whatever you don't go to the chromium website for support you go to the arch based distros forum for support and well that's not necessarily the best way to go about it that's the way new users most often work um so the 
biggest downside to Snap, and this is the one that sticks in a lot of people's craw, craw. Is that is that the it sticks in a lot, a lot of people's it pushes people in the wrong direction. Uh, it's owned and operated by one single company, and for the most part, the Linux community has no control over that company, and that co company's canonical now. In the episode we talked about Ubuntu, there's a lot of good things that Canonical does for the Linux community. I think they do more net good for the Linux community than they do net bad, I guess is the way I say it. Um, but they are a company, and in the end, of the at the end of the day, uh, someday they're gonna. Uh, file for an IPO, and they're going to become, become a public company, and at that moment, their sole goal is to make money. And that's going to be a big problem, because, especially if Snaps become the primary way of getting applications through across all of Linux dump. Um, <laughs> by having one company in control that refuses to open source the Snap Store, so that's another thing. The the, app, the the store itself is not open source. It's closed source. It's proprietary to Canonical, and nobody knows what goes on. Now, Snaps themselves are open source. You can get in and audit those and things, but you can't audit the store. It's controlled by Canonical. Now, if Canonical decides to shut it down someday, Snaps are you know the Snaps Snaps will still work because technically anybody can distribu distribute a Snap, but the Snap store would be gone. Uh, same thing if they instituted some crazy privacy policy sometime in the future. Uh, you'd have to put up with it if you were going to use the Snap Store. Now, I'm not one of those Linux people who say that all closed source things are evil. I don't think that's necessarily true. I do think that it is unusual for a company that proclaims itself to be the champion of open source software like canonical does to have a software system or a a, a a program that is not open source and it now there's some threads out there that has uh, mark shuttleworth explaining why it's closed source and some of that stuff does make sense it's about security and blah 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 blah. Um, but the ideals behind open source and behind Ubuntu and Snaps, as they should be, and almost every package you use on Linux is that it allows the community go to go in and see what's going on, and that's not something you can do with the Snap Store. And and that's because it's controlled by Canonical. It was done by Canonical, and it's probably not going to need to change. That's a big deal for a lot of people, uh, especially if for other distros who may or may not enjoy being reliant on a company or on a single company um, you know, for software distribution. That's reasons. That's one of the reasons why Snap is just going to be an option for people. I think I was going to wait till the conclusion to say this, but Snaps aren't going to, you know, you get on the internet and you see clickbait titles, Snap versus Flatpak, who's going to win? Nobody's going to win. They're just both going to be there. Um, yeah, it's the same thing. Like the A the AUR is not going to go away for for most Arch users. I'd say the vast majority of Arch users right now, the AUR and the Arch repositories, are the primary means of getting software on Arch. Some of people will probably use Snaps when they need to, but most people on Arch will probably use the AUR and the Arch repositories. Uh, on Ubuntu, Snaps are much more attractive because of the mess that are the mess that is the PPA system, right? It's really attractive on Ubuntu when you go want to find a program and you just have to go to the Snap Store and Snap install whatever instead of hunting down a PPA, worrying that that PPA is out of date, worrying that the program is out of date that is in the PPA, worrying that the program doesn't have the, the dependencies that it needs or 
the dependencies have security risks or whatever, the snap, snaps are much more attractive on Ubuntu than they are on anything that's based on Arch. Now, obviously, you know I'm a big Arch fanboy, so AUR for the win, but <laughs> that's one of the, you know, if I had my way, the AUR would be the future of Linux Patrick package management and distribution but that's never going to happen ubuntu is not going to ad adopt the aur which is just a sh you know it's just a crying shame uh, so this isn't so much a problem any more than as it was maybe like a year ago but snaps aren't always kept up to date so it's much less of a problem than say like ppas which i was just talking about but um a lot of times the snap stuff is a version behind which you'd get if you just package the thing yourself or the, maybe the company s supplies of the app you're talking about supplies with the snap and a, a you know regular package the package might be of a new, ver new version uh, than what you'd get in a snap and a lot of times the snaps don't play well with gtk themes which is a big you know sometimes a problem so they look kind of janky um, I mean, that's not a huge problem for functionality, but it, you know, it can be annoying. Um, I have marked down here, the AUR is better. So, I'm going to do an episode, I think, on why I think the AUR is so great. But, for the most part, the AUR is kind of like the Snap Store, only uh, it's not universal across Linux. Not every distro can use the AUR. So, that's the downside of the AUR, but I think... Is for Arch users, it's just superior superior to snaps in almost every way uh, outside of security. The AUR has some security problems, but you know, I've been using Arch for since 2017, uh, you know, off and on, and I've never single uh, had a single time have a problem with an AUR pro package being insecure. Or, or crashing my computer or anything like that. So I think for the most part, uh, security problems in the AR is you know is kind of fud. Um, anyway, so the last section that I want to talk about, you know, speaking of the AR, is alternatives to snaps. And you might ask, well, why do we want alternatives if snaps is so good? And I, I it's good for Linux to have alternative ways of doing things that aren't controlled by Canonical or just one company. Now, the biggest alternative is Flatpak. Now, the downside of Flatpak, of course, is that it is also controlled basically by one company, although Flatpak is... I'm going to say this, and I'm not sure if it's true, but I'm pretty sure it's true that Flatpak is completely open source, whereas, you know, down, uh, Snaps are, are not. The snaps are, it, it isn't. Um, but Flatpak... Flat packs are controlled by Red Hat, I believe. Um, maybe Fedora. I think it's Fedora. It's definitely Fedora. Okay. Um, I know what I'm talking about. I'm an expert. Not. A anyways, um, it seems that Snaps have kind of taken the lead in the whole package management race, but flat packs are still out there, and they're going to remain to be out there as a, as a feasible alternative. They're not quite as easy to use as snaps i think that's the the reason why snap seems to have overtaken the the linux community uh, as they have and flatpak kind of has it is be mostly because flatpaks aren't quite as easy to use as snaps now that's from a new user's perspective if you're you use linux for well, you know a long time flatpaks aren't hard to install they're just not quite as easy um, and it it's good that there's that alternative the problem is becoming is that there's is the age-old linux problem is now that there's a to a different system of doing things for universal package management is that there's fragmentation so there's programs that are in snap that aren't in flatpak and there are flat programs that are in flatpak that aren't made in snap forms and that means that you're going to have to have both installed. If you're going to use these universal package management systems, you're going to have to have both installed if you want to use them to their full extent because some programs will be in one, some programs will be in the other. And that's a that's an issue that is just going to plague 
uh, um, Linux forever and ever and ever, unless they all switch to the, user, the AUR. Again, the AUR, it's awesome. If everybody used the AUR, no fragmentation. Everybody would just have all the programs. They would be right there. I mean, why doesn't everybody just use the AUR? It'd be so much easier. Anyways, the last one I want to talk about. Excuse me, I needed a drink. The last one I need, want to talk about is elementary OS. Now... I have a lot of problems with a, the way Elementary OS does 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 their package management in terms of app stores. The idea behind them creating a, you know an app center that allows people to pay developers is fantastic. I think developers deserve to be paid. Uh, I'm not one of those Linux users who thinks that free means you shouldn't have to pay anything. The problem I have with Elementary OS is that it creates a situation where uh, Linux applications aren't necessarily available on other distros. It, so you, you used to be, for the most part, if you created a Linux uh, program or a Linux application and you package it, chances are you'd package it for Ubuntu, you'd package it for the AUR, and you'd package it for, you know, for Red Hat or Fedora. Uh, you'd you'd package it three times, and you know, and then you keep updating it three times every time you did an update. The elementary way of doing things is you might create an application for elementary, which is that just single one distro, and it may not be packaged even for Ubuntu or for um, for Arch or anything other things. Um, and, and that's because they have that incentive to be elementary exclusive. So it creates even more fragmentation. But that is one way to do it. And like, I'm not a big fan of the way elementary does it, but the, of all the Linux distros, their app center is the best app store out there. It does create problems, like I said, but it's still the best. And it's also... They have the only solution so far to the problem of getting developers paid. Uh, and that's something that Apple has excelled at, even though they get in trouble a lot for taking a cut. Um, developers deserve to be paid. And right now, like I said, Elementary's App Center is really the only cohesive way for multiple developers to come together and all get paid for their apps. So that's just one way to do it. Uh, whether or not, like I said, that's the best way to do it, I don't know. So that's it for this episode. It's a little short, mainly because I need to talk a little slower. Um, like I said, I'm, wor I'm working on doing this by myself, and that's uh, a little annoying. So I can't really pace myself. Anyway, so if you want to get in contact with us, I was going to put this at the beginning. But I didn't. So if you want to get in contact with, with with us or with me, you can do so at the LinuxCast is the Twitter handle for the podcast. You can fo you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at MTWB. I'm looking for a co-host. Uh, like I said, Ricky, who started this with me, he's a busy guy. I'm sure he will join me again once in a while. But otherwise, I'll be doing this solo until I find somebody to talk to. I'm just a lonely, lonely loser here, talking all about Linux all by myself. If you want to follow... Uh, Follow us on Facebook. If you can do so at facebook.com slash the Linuxcast. I don't use Facebook that often on that page, so uh, pretty much all you'll get is uh, notifications of new episodes, which you'd probably be better off getting on Twitter. Um, I think that's all I have to say for this time. So coming up next time, I'm going to be talking... Uh, oh, I might as well just do my AUR just best. I'm going to talk about why the AUR is so good. That'll be next week. So, uh, we'll see you then.